Hey Growl fans and welcome to another episode of the Growl Vlog. And today I'd like to talk to you about naming fictional characters, locations, and objects. As I'm going back through the draft of the second Growl book, my first draft, I'm finding a lot of the names that I kind of made up on the fly unsatisfactory. And kind of a funny story real quick. A lot of times, especially in this one, there, there are a lot of new characters, uh, minor characters. A lot of times when I'm writing something, I don't put myself out of it to go look up a character name. I'll just keep going, and in brackets, I'll put like a little note. Like, uh, if you're familiar with the Growout books, the Yags, I'll put Yagged 1, Yagged 2, Yag 3, all the way up into 9, I think I did. I didn't name any of them. So now I have to go back and fill in those blanks and actually put names in. So I'm going to use these same four techniques that I'm going to talk about in this video to make up these names. And in case you're wondering, no, there is definitely not something wrong with me. You may have noticed I'm not moving. <laughs> I'm not three-dimensionally challenged or anything of that sort. Uh, this is going to be kind of a tutorial video where I'm going to show you uh, screen captures of different words and names and things that I'll be talking about. So I thought I'd try out this format. You guys will have to let me know in the comments as to whether you actually like this kind of video or not, or you'd rather see me uh, personally in this sort of thing, or maybe a mixture, so just let me know in the comments. So the first method that I use is using names from real life. Uh, this works really well with character names, and not so much with location names, although it is possible to do that. I always keep an eye out for really interesting names when I'm reading the news or watching a video online. There are a lot of names in real life, especially from other cultures other than your own, other countries, that kind of have like a special ring to them. And an example that I came across really early on, actually well before I started writing the Growl Out books, was the name Marcel. And that's a name that I used for one of the child prisoners that escapes from the cult scene in the first Growl Out book. And I actually got this name from reading uh, a news article. It, I forget exactly what the event was. I'm pretty sure I have that saved in my computer somewhere. But it was a news article uh, that took place in France. So the article was in English, but it was about a French event. And one of the people mentioned in that article, I can't remember if it was the person that wrote it or one of the people that it was about, but the guy's first name was Marcel. And I had heard that name before, but just then it struck me when I, it was about the time that I was coming up with these ideas for Growelt. So I just wrote that down and later assigned it to one of the characters that I thought would be fitting for. So that's a really good example of a kind of obscure name, at least in, in the United States. Uh, in my experience, it's, it's a pretty obscure name that I wanted to use in a fantasy setting like this. It kind of has a little bit of an otherworldly quality. And the good thing about using real names is that we we do see them, we are familiar with them, we, we probably are able to pronounce them. The, the trick is just finding something that's a bit unusual. I mean, you really want a, a real life name to stand out and not be something like Jake or Sarah, unless it's contemporary fiction, uh, then that sort of works well. But I would say even in contemporary fiction, a little bit more of an unusual name would probably work out best to make that character stand out. Now, I know at the beginning of this uh, method, I said that this method doesn't really work well for place names or objects, you know, using real life things. But I did do that a couple of times. And one that comes to mind in the Growl books is the name, the Langland, which is one of the uh, men holders, uh, fiefdoms, one of their holdings in the realm. And that's actually based on a real place in the United Kingdom. Uh, that's a name of Germanic origin. It means the long land. And in the Growout books, the Langland is actually a, a very long land. So my idea behind that was that the Loa named this plot of land after its shape. It's very long and, and kind of thin. So here's kind of a, a real world place name that was, again, pretty obscure. Uh, I didn't know it existed. I just stumbled across it in my many Wikipedia searchings. I just kind of get lost there for a few hours every day, it seems. And it's just something that stuck out to me. It fit kind of the Germanic feel that I wanted the Growlout books to have. And so I, I wrote that down and then later assigned it to something. So in using real names for fiction that you write, it's really important to kind of converge on a certain style, in your own head at least, as to what kind of names you want to use. So for the Growout books, as I've said, I, I kind of zeroed in on Germanic names. So I use a lot of Germanic names, Danish names, names from the Netherlands, you know, Dutch names, those sorts of things. And I either use them outright as is, or I change them, which we'll get into some of the other steps here later. So if you're writing a kind of high fantasy that's based on, like, Celtic mythology and Celtic themes, you can find some real-world names like Aiden, Betha, Doyle, 
and Kier, and there are many others that you can find online. I mean, those sorts of names are real names. Those are actually from a baby book that I have. And they're very familiar to us, I would say, at least, you know, most of us that are well-versed in English can pronounce them very well, but they do kind of have still, and, and truly are, those kind of Celtic names. They have a Celtic feel to them, and they would fit perfectly in our world and also in a fantasy setting. And if you're doing kind of a futuristic sci-fi sort of thing, maybe some names like Cressida, Janica, North, or Zeus might work well for you. Again, those are all actual names taken from a baby book, but they kind of have like a futuristic tonality to them. The second method that I use is altering existing names. Uh, Again, this is just one of those things that works well for fantasy and sci-fi and maybe not so well for contemporary or historical fiction where the idea is to represent the real world as it is or as it was. But if you're kind of inventing your own setting from whole cloth, altering existing names to kind of fit your setting a little better is a really good thing to do, and it's something that I do frequently. For example, when I made up the name Gestalt, uh, who's a favorite of a lot of readers that have uh, sent me comments, he's one of the Loa characters, one of the lords, a kind of a, a flamboyant, interesting character. Uh, I started with the German name Gestalt, and if you look at the way that that name is uh, spelled, it's G-E-S-T-A-L-T. And then I just kind of played around with it. When looking at that out of context for an English speaker, you might accidentally pronounce it as gestalt or something along those lines. And I just wanted to make sure that anyone who read it in English was exactly sure how to pronounce it. So I kind of went the Italian route and I put an H in front of the G and in between the E. So you know for sure it's G and not J. And in a lot of Germanic languages, uh, the T and D switch places a lot and have similar sounds depending on where they occur in the word. So I changed the first T to a D. So the final spelling that I settled on was G-H-E-S-D-A-L-T. And so it's very similar to the German word gestalt, which means like shape or form, but I just kind of made it, you know, grow I just made it fit my setting a little bit more than would have normally been the case. Another example is the term Tussin machine, which uh, those of you who read the first Growlout book will recognize as the giant lumbering mechanical beast that Einza has to escape and later fight. And this is actually a compound word. The second part of it's pretty easy, machine. That's the German word for machine. It's spelled just like that. And the first one actually comes from the German word for centipede, which is Tausenfussle. And that's a very long and kind of complicated word, and I'm sure I just screwed that up. I, I know some German, my, my aunt is German, uh, but I told her many times as she was trying to teach me, my mouth doesn't quite move that way, so I, I do give that my best shot. But uh, as I'm sure most of you English speakers will agree with me, that's uh, quite a difficult and long name to pronounce. So I just took that and shortened it and made it Tassen, and then combined the two to Tassen Machine. Again, that's a word that has a real-world basis. I just kind of shifted it around changed some of the sounds, made sure that the spelling was such that uh, anyone could pick it up and pronounce it, and it wasn't a difficult thing to do. So you can easily do this for both fantasy and sci-fi. So if you wanted to come up with a new name for a sword rather than just calling it sword, maybe it's a specific type of sword that certain warriors have or that a certain character has, you can take a word as mundane as saber and just drop off one of the letters, call it sabe, or maybe sab, change it to a B there, have a double B at the end. And those are just two quick examples. I mean, you could mutate any word you wanted that way just by dropping letters or replacing letters. The key thing is just to make sure that whatever spelling you end up on is easily pronounceable. And for a sci-fi example, if maybe you wanted to make a new kind of ship and just didn't want to call it a freighter or a ship or, or a fighter or something like that, you could start with a word in a foreign language, for example, in Spanish, ligero, which means light or swift. And you could change it to something like liege or liga to give it a kind of alien but still recognizable feel. I find using uh, foreign languages really helpful in coming up with unique names for fantasy and sci-fi because they do kind of have that otherworldly feel if you're not used to hearing them every day. And combined with just toying around with them a little bit, that really kind of gives them a special flair that's, I think, really useful. Uh, Method number three is something I endearingly call make that shit up. This is probably the hardest thing to do, and it requires a lot of toying around and and messing around with different combinations, but uh, every now and then when you're just messing around with with these kind of ideas, you can come up with something useful. I'd have to say out of, for Growelt, I probably came up with like 80 or 100 names with this method and only ended up using like four of them. (laughs) But still, they're, they're really unique. This is probably the best way to get something that's totally unique. It's just to make it up 
and just play around with the sounds until you settle on something. Uh, two examples that I used in Growlout were the names Ilnel and Hilgaroth. Again, I just kind of kept uh, in mind the kind of Germanic feel that I wanted to have to the names, and I just played around with sounds, pronouncing them out loud, writing them down, and just over time, over a course of a couple weeks or months, uh, playing around with, like I said, 80 or 100 names, I, I came to a couple that I just made up uh, on the fly and I think ended up working really well. Now the key thing to do with these, especially and certainly with any of the other methods you use, is what I did is, you know, I would write them down or they would be in a, in a piece of writing that I'd give to a beta reader and then I'd ask them whether they could pronounce these names that I made up and if they said yes, I would ask them politely to pronounce the word out loud for me and uh, test, that's, that's essentially how you test them, is if they can pronounce it out loud without difficulty, you know that you have a good name. If it's too hard and they mispronounce it, don't get mad at them. Get mad at yourself, if anything, because you're the one that made it up. So just go back to the drawing board, toy around with the spelling, show it to someone else, and if, you know, four out of five people can pronounce it correctly every time, then you know that you're making up a good name. Now the fourth and final method that I'm going to talk about in this video is not something that I use uh, really a whole lot for writing. I do this a lot in role-playing games. I play a lot of role-playing games, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, Star Wars, uh, that sort of thing. And this is something that I use to make up character names uh, very quickly, not anything that I'm exactly attached to. And also I help players make up, you know, if we're playing like Star Wars, you know, you want to make up a really cool alien name. and. You're sitting there racking your brain trying to come up with stuff and we want to get playing already. I just kind of help my players do this method and it comes up with a pretty unique name pretty quickly. So I'm going to use my name uh, in this, uh, Victor Salinas, as an example of how to do this. So the first thing I do is on one side of the page I list uh, all the consonants. So we have V, C, T, R, S, L, N, and S there on one side of the page. And then on the other side of the page, I kind of list all the uh, vowels. So we have I, O, A, I, and A. And so if there are multiple uh, repeats, you know, the same letters, you, you still want to write those down. So then going uh, crosswise, actually, I like these combinations here. I'm, I'm doing this live as I'm, I'm talking about it. So going sideways uh, is one way to do this. So if we go across the first row that we have, we have V, I, then I'm going to go into the second row, C, O, Vico. That's not too bad. That sounds a lot like Victor, but it is a little bit different since the uh, letters have been shifted in order. So that's one combination we do. We also do it backwards from the top. Let's try that. That's I, V, O, C, Evoc. And you can make these as long or short as you want. I'll do a couple more. Uh, we have, let's skip down to the third row and start going from left to right. We have T-A-R-I-S-A. -S -A. Teresa, or we could make it Taris if we left off the A. So we kind of have a male and female name there that we just made up. And of course you can go, you know, any direction that you want and start from any line that you want. So I'm just going to do one kind of haphazardly here. I'm going to go with the C A R. A N L O Caranlo. This method works, I think, best with longer names. Uh, my name's pretty long, uh, so that worked out not too bad. So you can you don't have to use just names, you can use words, phrases, anything you'd like. Just kind of separate the consonants and the vowels and go back and forth and mix them up. Uh, there are a lot of different patterns that I use when I do this. Again, it's not for me something that I use that I'm I'm really gonna pick a name this way that I'm going to stick with and put in a novel. Uh, but for kind of on-the-fly, quick, and unique names, I think this one's probably the best. So I hope that uh, these four simple methods can help everyone in some small way to help name your characters, places, and objects in your own settings. Uh, I know not all of these work for everyone. Again, you know, the, that last one doesn't really work for me a whole lot, but I think everyone might have one or two of these that, that will work well for them. So I'd like everyone to try it out uh, in the comments section. Uh, make up your own name using one of these methods. Uh, you know, it can be a character name, a place name, an object name. Uh, write that name in the comments and then define it, you know, as to what it is. You know, just be a made up fantasy character or object or creature or a place or whatever you want. And let's see everyone else in the comments if they can pronounce it and what they think about those names. So we'll give these a try. Uh, I'll leave my own comment in this video making up my name. 
I'm not going to do it before the video comes out. I'm going to do it right when it comes out. And that will be kind of an example. I'll just make it up as I go along. I'd also like to ask everyone to uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this kind of video. Again, I'm just testing out this format. Uh, it's just kind of these still images here, kind of like a slideshow as I talk. Uh, I don't know if you guys like this sort of thing, this kind of tutorial. Uh, I think this way I can kind of get into the nitty gritty of showing you different writing techniques while actually showing you the words rather than just me talking. Uh, so if you like this sort of thing better or the same or less than some of the other videos that I've done where I'm actually in front of the camera, let me know. I just want to make sure that I'm giving you guys exactly what you come here for every time. Don't forget to rate and share this video if you liked it and subscribe to the Growl channel. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.